I really don't know any other lifestyle outside of being around cars. When I was 13, we heard of this Japanese anime series called Initial D. It was about this kid who delivers tofu in the middle of the night and he drives a severely underpowered AE86 Corolla and drifts through the canyons to make the delivery as fast and smooth as possible. He would take on higher horsepower cars and uh, pretty much be undefeated in his home turf. Ever since then, I got hooked on drifting. Every weekend, we would take this newly purchased 86 Corolla out there and kind of just mimic what we saw in the anime series. Even today, 17 years later, I still feel that same adrenaline rush. The community around professional drifting is unlike any other in motorsports. A culture born from car enthusiasts and aftermarket builders looking to make their own compact cars do things race cars aren't supposed to. From skidding sideways all along the wall and inches from impact to brazenly burning through stacks of tires and engines. One of the 180s that I was doing, the car just stalled out. I didn't know why. Uh, we pulled it back into the pits. Found out it was a mechanical failure in the engine. Luckily, we had a spare parts. So we were able to put it back together. As one of its longest standing citizens, Formula Drift driver Ken Gushi can see clearly through the years of a sport that has evolved from just a group of friends hanging out to an international motorsport. When I first started drifting, the only audience we had were the guys that were watching us from the other side of the fence. They would stop their cars, you know, risking a parking ticket and get out of the cars and watch us drift at the Irwindale parking lots. And now we have this grand scale, you know, venue like Evergreen Speedway here we packed tens of thousands of people coming here to watch us do what we do best. Seeing how the community's grown, how we've all grown as people, as drivers, how we've all made these networks, uh, it's just mind-blowing. One thing's for certain, drifting comes from the streets. I was really into RC cars when I was like 13, 14, 15 years old. And then once I got my real license at 16 and got a Honda Civic, it wasn't about RC cars anymore. It was just my real car. And I realized like there's this whole industry and I can modify my car and I could actually go street race it. You know, we didn't have a lot of money to go or tracks to go racing, but we would go out to the street races and compete. I modified my car so much, I kept blowing up the engine or breaking axles and it ended up turning into like an actual race car. Set it off. A lot of switches. Yeah. <laughs> it used to be so simple. The rule book is super thin. The cars are quite basic based on street cars. It didn't take a lot to get a competitive car. You just really needed a decent amount of horsepower, but a really good driver. I couldn't progress as a driver and continue to progress the team, so I had to make a decision. I was better at working and building the cars than I was driving them. The tires were worn and may have less grip. So we might want to go up on pressure on both sides. Not even running out of rubber, actually. It's just running out of endurance. New cam sensor and a little bit more boost. We were fortunate enough to work with Tanner Faust, who was definitely better at driving the cars. 
Together, Papadakis Racing and driver Tanner Faust stormed the drift scene circuit, winning back-to-back -back Formula Drift Championships in 2007 and 2008. Now racing full-time in Red Bull's Global Rallycross Series, Faust is able to return to his drifting roots with the same competitive spirit that helped him command the track nearly a decade ago. I wanted to be leaving rubber on the door the whole way around the bank. I was too hungry for it, and down the straightaway, I was in front of him when I should have been a little behind, and so I had to slow down, and then he was gone, and then I played catch-up the whole time. Tonight's episode of Motor Club is brought to you in part by Nexon Tires. Tonight's episode featured music by Connie Price and the Keystones, available wherever music is sold. You look at a driver sometimes on what he's doing on track, and I feel like you can see when the driver's really ahead of what's going on with the car. They're not reacting. They are driving the car, and they're manipulating the car in a way to do whatever they want. When Frederick Osbo first came into Formula Drift, he began his membership into a brethren of drivers who have remained in top form their entire careers, trading wins and losses with each other on turf that spans the globe. Vaughn Gittin Jr., Chris Forsberg, Dai Yoshihara, Ken Gushi. These are the names you'll find in the top heats that are always anybody's to win. this drifting community for so long, pretty much since drifting landed in the States, I've seen people come and go. And of course, there's a few of us that stayed, Dai being one of them, JR, Chris Forsberg, and then even some of the later guys like Justin Paula, Turk. We all kind of just respect each other. As soon as we line up, we're all you know, trying to kill each other out there. We all try to push each other to strive to do better, to become better drivers, and to all be you know, ambassadors of the sport. My spotter told me that you're going to be our hardest matchup this weekend, so It'll be fun, looking forward to it. Cool. Same here. The one thing that's special about Formula Drift is that we've always had this open pit concept where if you go to like a NASCAR race or an F1 race, it's nearly impossible to see or to even meet and greet your favorite drivers. There you go. Yeah. There's 32. So you gotta get 32 autographs. Oh, you want one of these? Okay. There you go, buddy. Yeah. I've had fans that's been with us since day one. It's a truly special feeling to see that these fans come back every single year to the same venues. 2015 Formula Drift season was amazing for us. I mean, there's nothing short of amazing for our team and how we finished. We finished second in the championship right behind our teammate, Frederick Ospo. Prior to that, it was extremely hard on myself because we never got the results we wanted. Uh, I haven't had the chance to, you know, prove to my team that I was a driver that's worthy of their time and their sacrifices. I struggled for so many years, you know, even to the point where I was doubting myself, questioning whether I should really stay in this sport or not. As the years go on, the championships that were within reach can start to feel like moments that got away. It just wasn't going as smooth as it did last year. And I think it's because everyone else on the field has been doing a lot better. They've made some changes during the offseason to perform better. For Dai Yoshihara, a one-time Formula Drift champion, getting back on the podium has never been harder. In 2011, I was able to win the championship. It was really hard to, you know, keep myself in the top. After I won the championship, I didn't do well. And, you know, it, it's just it's a terrible feeling. So I know uh, Ken's having a really hard time trying to get, win the championship. Ken Gushi, kind of an awkward line. I think he's having a difficult time. Reach a certain level and it just starts to plateau. 
and you start thinking too much, and it can go down. The field is so competitive. You can't get it just because you're a good driver. You have to have everything. You have to have a great car, great team. You have to have a luck. It's just super hard. Ken Gushi is on fire. Wow, talked about it, and he's going to be about it. Is he going to show us dominance? The answer is yes. Back then, it used to be a lot easier to kind of breeze through qualify, breeze through the top 32, and really start to perform in the top 16. But now it's like from qualifying, everyone's doing so well. Whoa, Gucci drops in. All it takes is one mistake on a qualifying run. You can be out for the entire weekend. You've seen some wavering there. He's probably a bit nervous. To think about the investments, the time and effort that your team, your sponsors, your fans have put into seeing you perform that one weekend and you washing it away in a matter of 15 seconds. You have the same thing. You know what to do right now. Odi Bakshi's Ken Gushi, he's going to the finals. He's going against Forsberg and also the loser grabs third place. It's a dogfight here between Bakshi's and Gushi. I remember, I think it was about 2003, my father and I came to a track event here at Streets of Willow. It was called Speed Trials USA. Obviously, at being 13 years old, I didn't have a driver's license, so we kind of had to sneak in. While he registered his name as a driver, I would hop in the car and do some laps around. This was exactly about the same time when I was really into drifting. At the time, streets didn't allow any sort of drifting. They would black flag you right away if they saw any sort of a tail slide. I kept doing it everywhere on the track. I remember specifically one time I came out of the last corner and started to manji or just drift side to side on the front straight. I saw the flagger black flagging like crazy. I saw that panicked, spun out in front of him and almost took him out. That was my very first time here, me and my dad breaking the rules. Since his early days of street racing, the streets of Willows have been sacred ground. The streets of Willow for me is significant because it's not just where I you know, got my drifting start or track start. It's where I've come to you know, meet a lot of friends I have today. I come out here to hang out with my friends on an open weekend where I'm not racing or not working. I will find a track day and I just come out here and hang out. That's kind of where I just escape. That's my escape zone, just driving on track and hanging out with friends, talking about car stuff. No uh, rear wing adjustment? Nah, I don't want to deal with it. Your brakes not on fire? Not this time. <laughs> not this time. <laughs> A love of cars never dies in Ken Gucci's circle of friends. Come on, young. Punch it. Open your eyes to the endless possibilities. Uh -huh. Instead of getting locked in facilities. Yes. Two, one, man. Keep going. No! <laughs> and a day on the track is a day earned in heaven. The drifting community and the sport compact community is extremely tightly knit. I've known Erica for about five or six years now, ever since she joined the, the crazy circus that we call Formula Drift. We've always had a really strong connection, a good friendship. She's super down to earth, and she's always willing to try new things and seeing what really goes on with us drivers. Today, you know, we had this perfect opportunity to get her into the car and, and really show her what this drifting thing is all about. Can we do a little warm-up real quick? Okay. I'll go easy on this one first. I got him getting dizzy. Do you ever get dizzy? Are you getting dizzy? Well, no, just a little. Right, here we go. You'll see how I do it, clutch kick, watch my hand. Yeah, yeah, that's important. You're going too slow. I'm going too slow? <laughs> wow. Wow. This is 
south, all I do is close my eyes and let go. Oh god. Is that really what you do? I really do. So come it on. It looks so easy, huh? I know, but it's so it's like hot. Girl. Back in 2003, I came here in the States from Japan, start competing drift series in the state side. And then that, that's when I met Ken first time. He's a you know, Japanese American, so he speaks Japanese. He can kind of teach me how the American drifting culture was. The hardest part I thought was when you turn it to the left, you can't, can't reach the bottle. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you gotta almost drive normal and let it hang out a little bit and kind of just modulate that balance. Is use the throttle. Yeah. Not with the, you know, the Not steering. Not with the steering? Or, uh, okay. You go first. We'll go first. All right. Check it out for you. Every kind of car and engine has seen track time at the streets of Willow. Today, that engine sits on the back of a modified tricycle. For two friends and competitors in Formula Drift, moving sideways should come naturally. Technical difficulties here. <laughs> Good thing Erico wasn't riding right now. Just turn your handlebar and just keep doing a circle. <laughs> and we'll do circles around you. something like that actually. It's almost like a car and a motorcycle mixed together. Tonight's episode of Motor Club is brought to you in part by Nexon Tires. Tonight's episode featured music by Connie Price and the Keystones, available wherever music is sold. Evergreen Speedway, considered to be one of the fastest tracks in Formula Drift. For drivers and fans, the action is real and as close as it gets. I'm extremely confident with Tandem because I feel like we have the right package in terms of you know, tire. Nexon has been doing phenomenal with providing us with one of the best, if not the best, tire out there for drifting. And of course, my team's been doing a great job keeping the car together. Pingoosh definitely has the same amount of skill as a Tanner Faust or even a Frederick. He just hasn't had that perfect year yet. You know, it really takes a perfect year of the car running well and the judging going your way 
and everything to have that championship. It doesn't happen to all the drivers. You watch your team put everything out there for you and you just can't get it right. I just kept asking myself, like, how is this not working? Why is it not working? Until we, you know, made the drastic change with the steering and suspension and I knew, okay, it's working. So it wasn't me. As the top 16 comes into view, Ken Gucci looks in the mirror and sees his past repeating. McQuarrie, Osbo, Forsberg. On to the grade eight, we're matched up against Tyler McQuarrie. Oh, Dr. McQuarrie goes hard into Kenny Mullen. Tyler just got out of an accident with Kenny Mullen and he had severe damage to his suspension, pretty much on all, all corners of the car. <laughs> Winning's winning, but winning without a battle is kind of lame. I think you're good, man. Fuck that wall. You got this. Tyler McCory, who's battered, bruised, knocked down, but not out. Here we go. McCory throws it in like a rock. Ken Gushi gets the win against Tyler McCory. Went into the top four. Odie Bakshi's Ken Gushi, who's going to the finals. Ben was telling me that Odie was probably going to be our toughest battle of the weekend, and he was right. His bank speed was off the charts. Nice initiation up on the wall. However, at the exit of the bank, I was able to manage to get to his door and I maintained super close proximity from touch and go to the finish line. It's a dogfight here between Bakshi and Gucci. But that wasn't enough to overcome his proximity to my car on the second lap, and he ended up getting the win. Odie wow. Bakshi gets the win. Is that podium? No. Yeah. yeah. Third. Third. Every driver knows it never comes easy. Even a moment on the podium is cherished glory, because you never know what tomorrow holds. Took a look at a you know traditional racing. You make one mistake on a corner. Well, you have 50 laps to make up that corner. If you make one mistake on a drifting qualifying run, that's it. Drivers and teams are constantly progressing to become better, faster, closer in tandem. And watching that really pushes myself as a driver to do better and stay more consistent. <laughs> I truly believe, you know, competitive drifting is 100% mental game. <laughs> I'm disappointed in women like Thunder and Hurts. Politicians are getting over with words and spilling oil. With friends at his side, the sun that sets is one that rises another day. <laughs> <laughs>